With the Nemesis expansion slowly but steadily ghosting in our general direction, it's important to point out that there are more than one system coming in this update. And one of them is, of course, the Spy System. Now, it is important to know that uh, it's not clear whether or not the Spy System is a paid-for item. I wouldn't be surprised that this is very similar to previous systems where you uh, get the base version, you get the mechanics, and then the content itself, such as the advanced uh, operations, are a paid-for item this is all completely up in the air but let's quickly go over some of these i want to point out that uh, uh, the community at large has um basically voted to turn this into a singular video rather than to uh, do it in two separate ones because this does cover two separate depth diaries if you want to get involved make sure you get your vote it votes in on the community tab in future polls anyway what it is important you start off your spy system by sending a envoy into an enemy empire rather than the usual things and start up a spy network now with every single spy network that you have you will increase your infiltration level and the further you've infiltrated an enemy, em any, uh, an enemy empire, the more access you have to operations. Now, the more bandwidth of infiltration level you have, the more operations or the more complex operations you can run. Now, it is important to note that right off the get-go, there are a bunch of operations available to you. The initial bandwidth of your uh, spy network will be 50, which means that you will have access to all sorts of interesting operations. And we'll go over those shortly. Anyway, in order to start an operation, you will, you're going to need to grease the wheel a little bit, right? So you're gonna, you need to get, go and invest some money into an operation just to kick off events and of course there's also an upkeep costs attached to this as well whether or not this is uh, going to be similar to uh, the primitive species infiltration is is interesting because an interesting question at least because you can go ahead and say okay so the spying on an enemy empire there is an upkeep cost where have we seen this before primitive civilizations. I would not be surprised actually if the primitive species infiltration system is going to get an overhaul to be more in line with this. Uh, in addition, you can also decide to attach an asset to your operation. But we're going to be talking about assets a little bit further down the line. Now, it's important to know that there are a bunch of operation types, and we'll go over them. This is not an exhaustive list. There will most likely be a lot more of these, but it is important to know this is just a generalized overview. There are four categories. We know quite a lot about three of these, but one still eludes us. First of all, there is subterfuge. Subterfuge is relatively straightforward. Gathering information, uh, it's... it's it's gathering information. What can one say? Um, you improve your intel on an enemy empire. You know more about their power, their diplomatic status, their technology level, etc. So what's really important here to know is, is that um, at the start of the game, when you just encounter another an empire, you don't know what kind of treaties they have with um, third-party empires. They could have a defensive pact. And using the gather information tool, you can find out about their diplomatic status with other empires. And it's especially useful when it comes to trying to figure out what on earth is going on and whether or not they are a soft target ready for you to invade because it could be that this pathetic empire next door to you has a big friend that they have a defensive pack with and you do not want to kick that um, bunch of bees so to speak so you want to be really careful about this a uh, technology level is also really important here because you will be able to figure out what is going on it's really the gateway into uh, getting more information about other empires and it really leads into some of the other these other operations that you can get then there is acquire asset we will go into that a little bit more later on uh, steel technology uh, this is something that people have been asking for quite a long time i think that steel technology is an interesting approach to things because uh trying to figure out what on earth is going on with another empire and trying to steal their technology is a very interesting approach rather than spending your science points you can go out there and say okay uh we've got an infiltrator within this alien empire and we can go and figure things out now, of course, if their decryption and decryption status is too high, you're going to have a really difficult time. And on top of that, if you are nowhere near the technological um, 
base of set enemy empire you're going to have an incredibly difficult time because you won't make heads or tails of set technology so it really just means that uh, whenever you're near an empire that is similar to you but they're a little bit more advanced in certain ways you can easily go in and say hey i want to go ahead and seal technology now that kind of translates to getting a research option all right fair enough uh, that's very similar to when you destroy an enemy ship and you get some of their wreckage and boom you've got yourself some uh, research options and you also get a bonus to a little bit of uh, advancement in that technology you still need to jump in and do the uh, most of the leg work but it gives you an idea of what's going on there and i kind of like this uh, not having the straight up ability to steal a technology uh, as it is uh, having an idea of where things are going getting the concepts and then researching on that is is a lot more interesting especially if you have a limited amount of uh, research opportunities you can only have so many research items in your list when you're researching things except of course when you already have an advantage in certain categories and that's exactly what this is so i like this this is this really it makes the randomness of technology a lot less of an uh, of an impact and i think that's really really good in addition you can also get uh, research speed bonuses it's like hey okay we've um we've got an idea of what is going on with their society research okay so now we can get a research speed bonus because of their methodology or something along those lines or inflicting penalties so that's the exact opposite so you set back their research and this is all really cool uh, really really good as long as you have the opportunity to start Stop a spy from doing all this stuff. Being proactive is really, really fun. Uh, be really, really fun because let's be honest here, nobody likes random stuff to happen to you uh, in, the, in a way that you couldn't avoid it. So you really need to invest in your spy network or at least your home defense. What is important to know, however, is that enigmatic engineering, which is one of the ascension perks, has gotten a boost, which means that you are completely immune to steel technology, which is rather cool. It's a big, big investment because in the end it is still an ascension perk, but it does mean that nobody can make heads or tails of your technology and they can simply not steal it, which is really, really nice, especially Especially if you are at a point in the game where you're like, okay, I've got an advantage and I don't want the enemy to have this advantage. So this is really, really good. So yeah. Uh, and then there is sabotage. This is the category that we know the least about. It's sabotaging star bases and creating a diplomatic incident. So sabotaging star bases is really curious because there is really no images or descriptions of what this actually does whether or not it's just blowing up a star base or destroying a building instead of ins inside of a star base that's really the question that i have here and it's one of the ones that i am the most skeptical about because um let's be honest here when the um, robotic uprising was still a crisis event uh, having random space stations explode was not a lot of fun they are very expensive so having that happen is really really annoying so i do hope that they balance this and it's just a building that explodes inside of a starbase or something along those lines diplomatic incidents in this particular case could be generating cbs or claims or something along those lines then there's manipulation smear campaigns is you destroy the relationship between two empires if you have an empire that has a good relationship with somebody else they got a bunch of treaties and you want to soften them up you can do a smear campaign and basically say okay you two you got a defensive pact we're going to go in ahead and make sure that they you don't like each other anymore and then you um, end those pacts and then of course the door is open for you to invade it's all in a setup uh, system and i really like this it does not really uh, exist within a vacuum the spy network is it it all has a goal towards something larger which is which is really really nice and smear campaign is a very good addition here extort favors of course if you're in the galactic community and you want to get more favors to push your goals through of course you will still need to spend that influence once you're in the galactic community uh you can extort favors which i think is nice uh especially versus larger empires that is be that could be extremely valuable and finally, there is provocations. Now, provocations is really, really cool. So provocations are established in such a way that they are A, expensive, and B, there's a good chance that you will get blowback from this. As in the other empire will do something, will find out, find out about what you're doing, and really, really not like you because of it. And the things that you can do here, and we've only gotten two examples so far, is uh, arm some privateers. So all of a sudden you can have pirates inside of enemy territory, or at least uh, another empire's territory, and you can 
can be like, yeah, uh, how about you have some guns, have some fun out there, go and raid some uh, some shipping lanes and get that trade value down. Especially versus uh, heavy trade value empires, this could be very, very powerful, especially if they're roaming pirates and they take down space stations and stuff. And if you're in the middle of a war, this could be really, really useful because all of a sudden uh, on the home front, there's a bunch of stuff going on that uh, are, is causing issues and arming privateers is a good option for that. Then there is probably one of the most ridiculous ones and that is called Crisis Beacon. Now, I would not expect that this particular um, provocation is going to be a thing until the very, very late game, once the crisis has kicked off, and I do to mean the AI crisis, not the nemesis crisis, but basically what it means is, is you install a beacon that will attract a crisis fleet towards an enemy planet. Yes. It's very, very cool, because basically what that means is, is that you can go ahead and say, okay, uh, the Prothorian Scourge has spawned. That's fine. Okay, we can deal with this. We could use the Prothor uh, the Prothorian Swarm to destroy some of our enemies. And all of a sudden, there's a giant fleet inside of enemy territory that they cannot handle. And this is really just a, a red button nuke approach because you can just go ahead and say all right enemy capital there's a crisis beacon here now uh good luck defending against the crisis uh that's that is incredible it's it's really really interesting that this is a thing because it le really allows you to leverage crises uh in your favor which i really really like now of course with crises of course um having the ability to steer away uh, fleets to other locations is incredibly useful and I hope that they do it with fleets that are already established rather than just randomly spawning a thing. Uh, and I do think that it will have work in such a way that uh, it will the, the, the target planet or space area will go onto the priority list of invasion for the crises. So that's really cool. I like that. That is really, really, really fun. Now, as I mentioned, spy networks do start with 50 network strength right off the get-go, which means that you can do some gathering of information, you can uh, start a smear campaign, you can steal technology, but you can also gather an asset now an asset is a special type of pop uh not necessarily a pop that exists in a certain way but basically what it is it's a um an agent within the enemy empire whether or not it is a, a disgruntled bureaucrat or a drone that can no longer work properly or is hacked or something along those lines and you can use that asset to do your operations every single operation has the opportunity to add an asset to it you don't need to but you can definitely do it. Um, at least that's what it is so far. I would not be surprised that some of the more advanced uh, operations will require assets to be added to them. But regardless, you can generate a asset by getting uh, the subterfuge operation type acquire asset or as far as I understand, it is a case of slowly but steadily over time, your spy master slash envoy will also generate uh, these uh, these assets, which is really, really cool. They've got their own little menu and every single asset has their own specialty. So some assets will be really good at manipulation. Some of them will be good at sabotage. Some of them will be good at subterfuge and provocations. And they all have die rolls attached to them. And uh, effectively, the system co-ops the relic system, which means that these kind of work like scientists in the uh, relic system and they'll be able to just go in and improve their right dice rolls and the longer of course it takes for them to do things the easier it is for enemy empires to detect you and of course you can go ahead and say okay i want to burn my asset i don't want to continue this operation because uh, i don't have the money for it anymore or i don't like the initial outcome you can burn that asset and leave them hanging and i'm basically like oh yeah this guy did it don't worry about it. We, we're completely innocent. This guy over here did it. So yeah, uh, sending a burn notice to your asset is once again really, really cool. Um, I do think that <laughs> having invested a lot of resources into your assets and making sure that you have them is going to be really important. So making sure that your cells are up and running is... Um, it's going to be important, so uh, burning your assets is not necessarily the thing that you want to do. But yeah, uh, at the end, there is a uh, operation finisher, and basically you can get a bonus out of things, whether or not you uh, obtain your goals, or the alien empire figures out what you're doing, and that could be a bit of a problem. Now, throughout operations, your spy master may ask you to add additional resources to your operation, whether it be money, probably things like consumer goods, or any type of resource that is relevant, really. 
at least in my opinion, that'd be really cool. But I'm sure even if it's not in the base version of it, the modders will go completely nuts and try to build something really cool with this. So yeah, uh, finally, uh, I did not touch on this during the operation sides of things. Um, if you have an operative, if you have an asset, every single asset will increase your spy network cap by five. It will not add them, but it will add a cap, which means the more assets you have in a spy network, and that's per empire, per envoy, uh, you will have uh, a higher total count that you can get. So slowly over time, you can build up that resource and then spend it on where you want it. So the more assets you have, the higher that number can be and the more extreme of operations you can do. I really, really like this uh, system. It really, really looks like really, really fun, especially the provocations as well as the manipulation stuff. Um, Sabotage, I'm not really 100% on, and Subterfuge is just a base system that leads into the rest of everything. Whether or not the Relic system is a good idea to have been co-opted for this is a whole question by itself. Um, I'll have to see how it works, really. It kind of makes a lot more sense than the Relic system, as in how it's used there. Um, personally, I felt the Relic system should have been more like the way the Enigmatic Fortress works in Leviathans which is a series of event chains that can be randomized and lead into each other. And I don't think the hallway approach is very, very good in Relics, but maybe something good can come out of this within the spy system for uh, the uh, Nemesis expansion. Still though, there is a quite a lot of stuff afoot. Apparently there is new stuff uh, going to be announced soon as well, because apparently the spy system as well as the um, crisis system is not the only stuff that is coming in uh, the Nemesis update. So we're gonna go and take a look at that in the very near future. In the meantime though, uh, make sure that you get involved on the polls on the uh, Steam uh, on the Steam community page. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the YouTube community page because we're constantly voting there on new stuff, uh, things you wanna see. For instance, the next video we're gonna be talking about is how to get a size 55 Ecumenopolis. Yes, that is uh, about twice as big as the average Ecumenopolis. Actually, it's more than that. But if you want to get involved and try and want to see certain types of videos, make sure you get involved in those community posts and as well in the polls and vote on them because it uh, allows me to see what you guys want. In the meantime, though, we're going to go and wrap this one up here. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Nemesis is on the horizon. I'm very excited for it. I'm really looking forward to see what this spy system can do, and of course also the Nemesis system itself, but we will see. I want to thank my patrons for making this video possible, and until next time, take good care of yourselves, and make sure you're safe out there. Double O Blorg.